Today on the Tiger Lacrosse Report, it's a special postseason edition where we will take a look at the Tigers' CAA championship victory and preview their first four game in the NCAA tournament. Get ready, Tiger fans. The Tiger Lacrosse Report starts now. AT&T knows the best kind of holiday is the kind where everyone gets what they wished for. Make this holiday extra happy when you buy one, get one free on our most popular smartphones, like the Samsung Galaxy S6. Buy one, get one free. So spread some cheer and capture every minute of it. Right now at AT&T, buy one, get one free on our most popular smartphones. How long does it take to change the game of basketball? Days, years, decades. How about 0.4 seconds? All of a sudden, big ain't so big no more. Small ain't so small. The step back three is the new dunk. Follow through is the new poster. Range is the new hang time. How long to change the game of basketball? One second or less. White Barkett's Ice Cream Plant is based in Sunbury, Pennsylvania, and locally owned and operated. We've been making our ice cream for nearly 50 years. We create roughly 70 flavors of ice cream right now. We use local ingredients, especially our cream, which is from our milk plant. The cream is what gives our, our ice cream a rich and creamy texture. Now together with our customers, uh, we've created a a product called Peanut Butter Indulgence, which will be coming out this summer. It's a peanut butter ice cream with sea salt caramel swirl and chocolate covered pretzel. How could you go wrong with that? Personally, I love our ice cream. You come to our house at any given time, you'll find at least five packets of ice cream in our freezer. Uh, our kids grew up eating wise quality ice cream, and now we get to treat our grandchildren to it. It's been a pleasure for me to be tasting ice cream for over 40 years for Wise Markets, and, and I'm loving every minute of it. Hello and welcome to the Towson Sports Network studios for today's postseason episode of the Tiger Lacrosse Report. I'm your host, Spiro Marikas. The Towson University Tigers took on the Fairfield Stags for the CAA title this past Saturday. After a tightly contested title match, the Tigers came out as champions for the second year in a row as they defeat the Stags 4-2. Let's take a look at the highlights from the title game. He's at the Schneider, moves in, point blank shot, scores. Charlie Schneider with his 11th goal of the year, and he got loose down in front of the crease, and there was nothing Tyler White could do about that. Back up top, work it down low, shot, score. Charlie Horning, his 11th of the year, and it's 2-0 in favor of Fairfield. Gets it to Conan, top of the box to Parks. Back over to Conan. Conan wide shoots and scores. So the Tigers finally get on the board. Tyler Conan with the Tigers goal. And for Tyler, that is his sixth of the year. And Lee's been cut in half. He'll feed behind the Drenner. Drenner feeds up top. Joe Sider fires, shoots, and scores. Bottom left corner, we're tied at two. So Joe Sider with his 31st goal of the year. And the Tigers, who trailed two to nothing at halftime, have tied it up at two, and we've got a timeout. Conan over to Mazzo on the left. Now Hunter's jumping, shot, score, Tigers, Spencer Parks, and the Tigers have taken their first lead, three to two, on the seniors' 20th goal of the year. Moving in, feeds behind, gets it to Spencer Parks, turns, shoots, and scores! Spencer Parks with his second goal of the year. I think Baring thought Spencer was gonna pass it, kind of gave up, and then Spencer just stuck it down in the bottom right, and Towson 
with a four goal run and a two goal lead with 6.10 to go. Tigers back-to-back -back CAA title is the sixth in program history since Towson joined the CAA in 2002. The six tournament titles are twice as many as other, any other conference member. Tyler White, Nick Gorman, and Spencer Parks were named to the all-tournament team, and senior defender Mike Lowe was named the tournament's most outstanding player. As always, I'm joined by the head coach of the Tigers, Sean Nadling. Coach, congratulations on another CAA championship. And, uh, you know, the first time you played Fairfield, 18-11. to 11. This one was an absolute complete opposite ball game. Yeah, first off, thanks. Yeah, it was uh, obviously a, a fun game to be a part of, um, not for the offensive-minded person, but um, you, not that you really felt it was going to be as, you know, as much of a defensive battle as it was, um, you know, coming out after the first game being 18-11. Both teams um, defensively probably not being happy about the performance in the first game. Uh, I know their goalie wasn't happy with their performance in the first game. He got um, he got pulled out after the first half. Um, you know, to come out in that in the championship game and you know where possessions are so valuable, understanding that the tempo is going to be probably a little bit more slowed down, especially with both teams not playing overly up tempo. Um, you know, it's it's not surprising that it was a low scoring game, but that low scoring was a, a little surprising. But both defenses played, I thought, terrific. First game against Fairfield, they jumped to a 2-0 lead. Then you guys went on a 9-0 run, eventually winning 18-11. This game, they jump out to a 2-0 lead. You score the last four goals of the game. At halftime, you're trailing 2-0. What are you telling your team? Well, we needed to just play much better offensively. We weren't. Um, we looked slower than their defense. We looked um, lethargic with the ball at times. We weren't. You know, dodging, moving the ball, moving it again, re-dodging. Um, you know, there just wasn't a lot of flow within our offense. So um, we wanted to make sure that our guys, you know, came out with much more pep in their step offensively in the second half. Uh, defensively, I thought we were playing strong, um, and we were playing a lot of it. So we needed to understand, you know, we had a plan if we continued to play long possessions defensively that we'd have to go to zone towards the back end of the possessions, you know, hopefully get a stop there so we still weren't – so we didn't have to grind out on ball play as much as, as you know we could have. Uh, luckily faceoffs were were decent. You know, we didn't win the battle, but you know, I think we, you know, we didn't win the war. I thought we won, you know, won some nice battles in the faceoff X. Um, but really it was just, you know, being down two nothing, championship game, you know, we know we're right there in the mix. Uh, there was no no sense of panic, but definitely a sense of urgency from the offensive end to, to really step up their play. As a defenseman, I'm sure you were so happy for Mike Lowe to win the CAA most valuable player in the tournament. I mean, long stick defensemen don't often win those types of awards. Yeah, I was excited for our whole defense, all, you know, for Mike and Nick and, and Tyler, all those guys to get recognized in the uh, tournament, you know, the tournament selection there. Uh, it was great, you know, and then Tyler was amazing. You know, I think he had 15 saves. Um, our defense did a good job of forcing them to, to shoot, shoot some shots that you know he's comfortable with and he you know he made those routine saves but it was definitely all over Colin Burke and, and his shot Mike was just terrific on ball he was terrific off the ground you know Mike's just been uh, elevating his play throughout the uh, the last part of the season here and uh, I couldn't be more excited for him to be recognized by the CIA you know for that award and then at the uh, Tigers Awards Banquet Jack Adams wins male athlete of the year how often do you see a short stick defensive midi win an award like that? I've never seen it happen. Uh, never really heard of it happen. But you know, Jack's, uh, <laughs> as his nickname on the team is Horse. You know, he's a he's a horse for us. He's a guy that we rely on being able to play good, tough, sound defense. You know, he you know he's he's just a, a leader on the field with his voice, his presence um, for his peers to recognize that to, to nominate him for that award, and then. You know the other coaches had to realize you know his contribution for our program and how impactful that is uh, that speaks volumes to Jack and and to our defense altogether. All right so the Tigers win the CAA title for the second year in a row uh, third time in four years that you guys have done this how does this one stack up with the first two? 
uh, you know, it's, they're all special in their own way. Um, you know, 2013, you know, we, we were kind of written off right from the start of the season, but our guys stayed, you know, true to form and believed in themselves. And then, you know, we're able to, to win up at Penn State against the number one seed uh, to punch our ticket. Um, in the last year, uh, again, you know, we were, we were strong throughout the season, it fell apart in the end of the regular season, but came back and really got back true to form in the playoffs and, and won a, a very exciting game, you know, against UMass. Uh, this year, I thought was, was unique in that we were the number one seed. We hosted, you know, how are we going to handle that? Can we handle that? You were you also know, the preseason right favorites to win, so you right. were the, the target the entire yeah, year. The target, the entire year, target was on our back. Our guys, you know, all season, I think, did a really good job of staying true to what we talked about in August when we got on campus. Day by day, put the work in. All right, don't look at the, the rankings. Don't look at what people say about you. Don't believe all the hype around you or, or criticism, whatever it is. Believe in the people in this locker room. Know that you can get on the field and, and perform at a high level, and you take care of business doing it that way. You know, our guys did that, you know, into the postseason. You know, beat a, a tough Drexel team um, you know, in the semis came out against Fairfield and, and obviously performed well enough to, to win there when the target was on our back. Didn't allow the pressure really to get to us. Uh, this one, you know, I think is, is definitely a very special one for the guys. So the Tigers with three CAA championships in the last four years and, and you set a school rec tied a school record for most victories in a year in Division One program with 14 with a win in your playing game, which will be coming up in a minute. We'll talk about that. You'll set a school record for most victories at the Division One level. You got to be proud about that too. Yeah, um, you know, it just shows what these guys have done this year, the commitment level that they've put on the practice field, on their own time to, to the lacrosse uh, aspect, their decision making off the field, not allowing, you know, really distractions to get in our way um, from our, our progress moving forward throughout the season. Um, you know, we're excited about winning the CAA, excited about the opportunity to host the NCAA tournament, and, um, you know, hopefully our guys are, you know, I know they're, they're dialed in and, and excited about that. And, you know, we got to play a, a great game to, to earn that win. You talked about how good the defense has been all year. Guys like Nick Gorman, uh, Andrew Cordes, Mike Lowe, Tyler White. On the offensive side, I think the thing that has bothered other teams is that you can score from several different areas. I mean, you're getting it from your attack, you're getting it from your first midfield, you're getting it from your second midfield. That makes it tough for the defensive coordinators of the opponents. Oh, yeah. Having been a, a defensive coordinator and still obviously working closely with our defense here, uh, it's very tough, you know, you, to, to try to pick and choose who you're going to really pay attention to. You know, I think for us, you have to pay attention to a lot of guys. Obviously, certain guys are unique to what they, they, they can do, you know, whether they be ball handlers, initiators, off-ball guys, type players, you know, shooters um, from the outside and, and whatnot. Uh, but I think the, the nice thing and luxury for us is that we do have some balance. We do have multiple threats. You know, you look at Spencer Parks having a, a really strong year. Very quiet against Drexel comes out and it makes you know three great you know you know three great contributions and, and two goals and an assist you know to allow us to you know get to to four goals you know for the CAA championship game and you know again uh, didn't play didn't play great against Drexel um, came out and then played a great game and you know that's I think the the balance in our team. You also looked you you got some young blood in there too. John Mazza has started to come on very strong mm -hmm. as the season has progressed. Yeah, John's a you know a good talent, um, fits in well with our offensive system. You know, in regards to what he can do uh, with the ball and the stick, uh, still learning you know really how to move you know without the ball. Uh, Ian Kirby, you know another freshman who, who's filled some great role um, you know this year you know and filled in some good time. Uh, definitely a threat there. Uh, so yeah, some some young guys getting some good looks. So this team heads into the playing game, which we'll talk about coming up after the break, but. As you look back on this season, I know the one that really sticks to you is the Delaware game, which, which probably cost you big time when the committee sat down to talk. Um, the only other loss to Hopkins. There's been talk, and, and I'd like to get this out here now, about your schedule this year. Mm -hmm. But I think what people fail to realize is when you put this schedule together, Ohio State was a top 20 team. Georgetown was a top 20 team. You didn't realize they were going to have off years. So when you put that schedule together, it wasn't that you were trying to avoid anyone. Absolutely. No, we, you know, I think every we try to schedule it as best we can, as tough as we can every year. And, you know, that you're exactly right, you know, in your point. And again, we, as I told the guys, we controlled what we could. You know, we had, you know, two hiccups, you know, throughout the season, you know, for some losses. 
um, you can't control what other teams do. You know, and, and that's you know what happens. You look at look at the ACC. You know, Duke. You know, they had a couple of tough losses. You know, they lose to Richmond. They lose to Air Force. You know, it's you know those are two losses against SoCon teams. You know, whose RPI kind of as a conference is lower than than ours. You look at our conference with UMass and Hofstra. You know, beating North Carolina. You know, when does that when has that really happened? And you UMass doesn't even qualify for the conference tournament. Yeah, UMass beats, how about those guys? They beat Penn State, they beat North Carolina, they beat, um, I'm blanking on, you know, they had another uh, strong win. I'm blanking on who it is. Oh, Ohio State, which was an elite eight team last year. You know, Georgetown was a top 15 team coming into this year. You know, you got those teams that have been historically ranked and then not that case anymore. You can't, you know, obviously you can't predict that. You schedule where you think you, you need to and then go forward from there. Uh, this year was, as I've told many people, the craziest year in Division One I've ever seen between teams winning and losing. But, you know, I'm glad that we were able to, to punch our own ticket, take that decision away from the committee, All right, and, and then we got to move forward from there. All right, let's talk about the play-in game. The Tigers will take on Hobart on Wednesday night at, John, well, Wednesday afternoon, 4 o'clock, Johnny United Stadium. This is a team you scrimmage against this year. This is a team you played last year, beat by one goal. You look at the Statesmen, they're, they're, they're 10 and 6, but they got blown out by Bryant, 15 to 2. They got blown out by St. Joe's, I think, 13 to 6. Then they come back and beat both of those teams in their conference tournaments. They're certainly peaking at the right time. No doubt. This is a, a team with a great amount of confidence, um, showing definitely some resiliency and ability to overcome you know, the losses throughout the, uh, the conference season there. Um, they're a, a balanced team, you know, where they play good, strong defense. They got really good personnel offensively. They face off well. They got a strong goalie. So this team, obviously, what you, what every team wants to do at this point in the season is peaking at the right time. These guys are doing that, and you know, they're they're definitely going to be a force coming in here. Frank Brown's their leading scorer. Um, Jackson Brown is their goalie. We're hoping he's running good on band, empty. Good band too. Yeah. We're we're hoping he's running on empty on Wednesday. But anyway. Talk about those two guys. Uh, terrific, you know, their goalie. <clears throat> we noticed it when we scrimmaged him. He was, he was good. You know, he was tough to get the ball by. Um, very, um, very explosive to the ball. Very, you know, big in the cage. Um, offensively, you know, he's he's terrific. You know, he's a lot runs through him, and for a good reason. You know, he can do a lot with the ball. He draws a lot of attention. You know, and is able to to make things happen with or without the ball in the stick. Then the face-off, they have two guys that both are over 50%. So that's another area you're going to have to be very careful. Absolutely, you know that's a that's a key for us. You know, in this game, you know, not that, you know, we're we're discrediting anything else, but it's, you know, facing off for us, which has been kind of up and down this year. We got to be at our best. These guys are terrific. You know, given uh, allowing Hobart to have more possession time through the face-offs is, is definitely going to be detrimental to, to us being successful on uh, on Wednesday. So we got to be great at the X, great off the wings. Um, not allow them to continue to stack possessions on each other. When you when you have a team like Hobart that that did get blown out by the two teams that they beat in their conference tournament, it's got to worry you that they're coming in saying, you know, nobody's expecting us to do anything. Nobody expects them to do anything in the uh, Northeast Conference tournament, and they win it. Now nobody's expecting them to do anything in a play-in game. For your guys, it's probably got to be kind of tough. Yeah, I mean, our guys, you know, I think are looking at them you know, like they've done all year, you know, it's a team that we get to play, you know, it's another game that we get to play, you know, obviously preparing for them, respecting them, um, understanding that, yeah, they're, you know, they're really playing at, at a high level, you know, this time of the year, you know, the past two games. Um, but, you know, we got to make sure that we, you know, dial into ourselves, dial into what we need to do, understand who they are, and um, know that it's going to be obviously another very, very competitive game. Second week in a row that you've got a short week between games. Um, last week, obviously, you, you played on Saturday and you had the tournament on Thursday. This week, even shorter, play on Saturday, got to play on Wednesday. You've been out of that mode for a long time since early in the season. Um, having to do that last week, does that help you this week in preparing? I think a little bit. Um, you know, the tough thing you have to, to keep in mind and focus on is, you know, how much time on, the, on your legs are you doing with your guys? You know, going Thursday, Saturday, two tough ga team, uh, games coming back and back to work on Monday it's like you know you want to do enough but you don't want to do too much so we're trying to balance that out as far as our practices preparation you know keeping the guys physically healthy and sharp and, and ready to go as far as and, and mentally sharp 
especially you, during exams. <laughs> do you, yeah, you've got that going on too. Do, do you spend more time in the film room than you normally would? Uh, just a little bit, maybe extended time, uh, just getting a little bit more familiar with them. Not because you know, during a normal week, if we're playing, you know, practicing Monday through Friday, you know, we're doing film four days a week. You know, here you got to kind of crunch that into, you know, two days. So you you um, you scrimmage them in January. Does that help? I think a little bit. Probably helps both teams. You know, being familiar with personnel. You know, and, and knowing. You know that you faced these guys before, and you, you got a little bit of a taste of them. You know, in the in the preseason, obviously both teams are are different and, and much improved. You know, throughout the course of the season, both teams have achieved the opportunity to play in this NCAA game. So, you know, both teams are, are playing at a high level. All right, the Tigers will face off with Hobart inside Johnny United Stadium on Wednesday, four o'clock in the 2016 NCAA First Four game. I'll have the call along with Hunter Lochte on CBS Sports Radio 1300 and TowsonTigers.com starting at 345. Tournament and ticket info is available on TowsonTigers.com. You can also get your tickets by calling 1-855-TU-TIGER. Coach, good luck. Thanks for joining us, and hopefully we're talking real soon about other NCAA games. Thanks, Bill. All right. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you Wednesday at Johnny United Stadium. For head coach Sean Nadlin, I'm Spiro Marikas. Have a great weekend as always. Go Tigers.